Welcome back. I have been working on this holds my Q snap frame and I've started using it at my desk for <laughs> um, a commission piece I'm working on. And I keep having to switch out and bring my hoop stand back to my table. Anyways, um, I did not finish my hanging plant yesterday, but that's okay. I will do it later because we are going to start on our planter boxes today. All right. Get this back in here. So we are going to start on the planter boxes down at the bottom today. I'm trying to think what's today. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Right? It's Wednesday. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have so much to do. We might need an extra day next week. <laughs> okay. We are going to do this planter box first, just this gray one, because we have two different flower types in there. Um... Trying to decide, we might need to do a third. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, all right. I'm trying to decide what one to start with. Let's start with the kind of rose type purple, the purple flowers. Let's see. Yeah, they're both purple. Okay, so we are gonna use the DMC 550. Or if you're doing the Blue House, that color is DMC um, 29. You can use any purple. You could use any color, honestly, but the pattern is 550 or 29. So whichever you feel like using, oh shoot, we gotta do green first. I'm doing the same green that I used yesterday. So I'm using 703. Um, if you're doing the blue house, it's 470. We gotta do the greenery first, silly me. And I don't even have mine drawn on there, which is fine. It doesn't need to be drawn on unless you really want to. But we're gonna do few flowers here. Okay, those ones purple. And then we'll do some tulips. Okay. All right, I am going to use two strands because we kind of have a lot that we're going to put in here with our leaves and our stems so two strands i'm using 703 if you're doing the blue house i would use um the i just said it 470 okay I think we'll be able to do this whole side. I think we can do all, all three planters. Okay, let's do it. Now, the easiest way to do small plants is just to do some straight stitches. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, when I know I'm gonna be putting an, a stitch right there, I try not to start there, cause then I'll have a knot. So I don't wanna come up here. Normally I would, but I don't really want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down here. What I'm gonna do is kind of push this gray out of the way so that I can come up behind it and then it'll cover up that. That's why I would normally start at the top. It's easier to go down and do that, but I can do that here and just go down under that gray. And just do 
some straight stitches. Okay, stems are easy enough. Let's add some leaves. You can do a whole bunch or just a few. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I draw more than I'm actually gonna do. So I usually start with like one on each stem and then I decide from there if I want to add more. Oh, I didn't even say what I'm doing, I'm sorry, hold on. Pretend you don't see that. Um, okay, so we're gonna go up. We're gonna do a detached chain stitch. So we're gonna go up and down in the same hole or like right next to each other like we would do a French knot. Because it's gonna be hidden by the stem, you can go in and out of a different hole, but normally you would go in and out of the same hole. And then we're going to leave our loop open like this. Oops, that one's twisted. Okay, so we've got that open loop. We're gonna come up inside that loop where we want our leaf to end and then we're gonna pull that loop snug now the looser you keep it the rounder the more round your leaf will be so you kind of have to find that happy medium where it's rounded without being floppy okay so you kind of have to like figure out your own tension there so same thing up and down in the same hole we're gonna keep that loop open. Sometimes I'll just like hold it out to the side so I can kind of see what I'm doing. That's where I want my leaf to end and then I'll loop this over the top. And then pull that snug. And then we're just gonna tack it down on the other side of that loop. So it just creates like a little tiny stitch just right over the top of that to hold it down. And we just have this little little loop and just that little tiny stitch keeps that rounded leaf so i'm just gonna do one here same thing up and down in the same hole figure out where you want to end that pull it snug I'm using, I have a very long piece of thread. And then I'll do one over here. And then I'll go back and decide where else I wanna add these. Now, if you're following your pattern exactly, you're gonna have much smaller leaves than I am creating. Which is great. I am just gonna go in and kind of fill in where there is kind of like some holes in our leaf pattern here. I'm gonna do one down here. Okay, now zoom your eyes out for a minute and don't look at it too closely and decide kind of where else you wanna put any more leaves. You could just do like a little tiny leaf like down here, like sticking out of the pot. It doesn't have to be connected to a stem. all the green we're gonna do here but I think how many greens does this pattern have hold on one two three four okay so that's all of this color green we're gonna do the other three greens on the rest of it so let me tie this off I think let's just do all the greenery first because <laughs> then I can't just stop in the middle. We'll just get all of this side done. And then tomorrow we can do the other.
other side. Okay. All right. So the next color I'm going to use is going to be 505. Hold on, I can't get my needle. Sometimes, I don't know why it happens, but like, look at this. It like gets caught. I like can't get my needle off of it. It's very annoying. Sometimes I just cut it. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. So I'm going to use 505. I'm just going to do this plant here. So if you're doing the blue house, maybe like 30, 52, 30, 52 sounds good. Either 3052 or 3364. I don't know. Just use one of one of your greens. I'm doing one that's a little bit more kind of an aloe vera type color is what I'm imagining. I'm gonna stick with two strands. And we're just gonna do a bunch of straight stitches. I'm not gonna draw these on top of my thread. Um we're just going to practice not splitting our thread in a funny way. Okay. So when we come up, like we've done before, we want to split a strand if we can. That'll help so we don't have um, gaps in our threads. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down under that orange or brown. Now, because we're stitching on top of other stitches, you can't pull these very tight because then we're gonna have a problem with this getting pulled funny. So very gently pull it so it's snug without, um, without pulling and creating a problem with your satin stitches. Now, when I'm doing a plant like this, I usually go in and do kind of create like a shape and then I come back and fill it in. So I'm kind of just all over the place. Obviously if you have yours printed you can follow it a little bit more closely like it's drawn but well no because we have the satin stitch over it so you can't see it you kind of have to go with your gut. So just different lengths, different heights, and we'll come in and fill in some shorter ones. It's okay if they overlap, it's okay if they share the same hole, it's okay if they don't. We're just gonna, it's okay if some are closer together and some are further apart. one a little bit higher. I'm just going to do one more little one over here. And then every once in a while Stop stitching for a second. Let your eyes focus on the whole project instead of just this little tiny space and decide when enough is enough. And I think enough is enough. All right, one down. Let's do this one next, just so then we can finish those and move on to the top. So I'm going to use the 905. 
maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I like 905. Um, if you're doing the blue house, maybe 904. Or, yeah, I think 904. See, this is why we wanted to wait to do our books. We can have all these cute green books with our <laughs> thread scraps. Okay, so I'm keeping with the two. Actually, let's, let's do four strands on this one. So either two strands doubled over or just four strands. I'm gonna do two doubled over. We're gonna do a detached chain stitch, but we're gonna do it a different way. I was gonna do like some more straight stitches, but let's, let's not, let's do something else. Okay. The only thing is it's gonna be annoying because we're gonna have to come up and down behind this pot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up between those two. Now, instead of going down in the same hole, we're gonna come over a little bit and go down here. So we're creating a space between where we're going up and down. And then we're gonna come up where we want that to sit. So this is just gonna give us like a wider leaf. Now, if we were using fewer strands, it would probably look fairly pointed as well. But this is, and we're not pulling it very tight because same thing, we're on top of this satin stitch. So um, it just will be a little bit more rounded. But this is a great way, if you have fewer strands, to get kind of a more pointed leaf. Now, if that gap between the threads is going to bug you, don't worry, I'll show you a way to fix it. Give me a minute to finish this real quick. I'm just going to do three. Now you can leave them open like this if you want, but if you want to fill them in, if you come up at the bottom of your, um, I was gonna say knot, but that's not a knot. Like where you've like tacked it down, like come up in that same hole. You can just do a straight stitch down the middle. Oh, don't catch your knot though. And just do a straight stitch right through the middle and fill it in. It almost looks like a little cactus. I didn't really mean for it to look like a cactus, but. Here we are. I mean, you could also come up at the bottom and go down where you've tacked it down as well, if that's easier. But you could also just leave it open if you wanted or fill that in with a second green color to those straight stitches in like the brighter green. Okay, plant two. Now let's do some tulips. We're gonna go back to two strands. All right, I am getting out my fourth green. So I've got 895, whoops. The fourth green would be 3364 if you're doing the blue house. Floor. Don't worry, I've got more. Okay. All right. Now we're just going to do straight stitches for the stems again. Don't worry, I'll show you another way to do stems. 
tomorrow, but these ones are small enough that a single straight stitch works really well. So I'm going to come up at the bottom because that's where I want my knot to be. We're just going to do one straight stitch. Another one here. And then one more right next to it. Mm. Do I want it taller? Same or short? I don't want it shorter. I'm going to do it just a little taller. Okay. Okay, so for the leaves... I'm going to do kind of a satin stitched. So I'm going to come up and do a really tall leaf and go down at the bottom. And then when I come up, I'm going to come down and over just a tiny bit. Don't go over too far because then it will make it um, not look right. But just like just over a tiny bit and down some and then we're gonna go down in that same hole and then I'm gonna come on the other side and come down and over just a tiny bit more almost coming in like behind the stitch so then we've got that nice thick tulip type leaf I'm gonna do I'm trying to decide do I want a leaf on this side I think I'm gonna do a shorter one here and then a longer one on the other side. So this one I'm only gonna do two stitches. And then this side I'll do a taller one. And I'll do several stitches on it. Oops. There we go. All the greenery is done. All right. Let's do some flowers. Yes, we're ready for some color. Okay. All right, now we're gonna get out our purple. I'm gonna use 550. But if you want to use something else, you can. I am going to use all six strands. I'm gonna do one single messy French knot for each of these flowers. So I'm gonna come up, just up from the stem, and then when I go down, I'll go down into the stem. And because it's going to be kind of big and messy, I want this stitch to be just a little bit bigger than I would normally do with a French knot. If I was doing a French knot, normally I would be like there. But this one's going to be like a big fluffy one. So I don't want to be too close to it. All right. So I'm going to do one, two, three. I'm going to keep this pretty loose. I'm going to go down in that stem hole. So I'm not pulling it very tight. And then I'm going to go straight down. And we've got like this big fluffy flower. So let's do that again. 
We're gonna go one, two, three. Keep it fairly loose. Now we don't want it to be like all over the place. So if it's looking really messy like this, like tighten it up just a little. If it's way too messy, we can fix that. Let me do one that's a little bit messier and I'll show you what I mean. If I can do it on purpose, okay. So that's like gonna be a little crazy. Okay, so this one is like a little bit too loose right here. Like this one didn't get pulled tight enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up just on the other side of my knot. Okay, I'm gonna come up and then I'm gonna do another stitch down through the center, just over the top of that to kind of hold it in place. You can do this with regular French knots too. If you do one that you didn't want so loose, just do another stitch. Cause that's what this is doing right here. That first, that first one that you do, it's just holding that knot down like with a little tiny stitch. So you can do it again and just tack it down if it's a little bit out of control. So we're gonna do one more. Hold on, I've got a knot back there. Mm, something's going on. Okay, so we're gonna go one, two, three. And down. <gasps> Look how cute they are. You could also like if you had like a little stem down here, you could do like a single wrapped like a bud or something. I'm not going to, but you could if you wanted more purple further down, but I'm going to leave that. we're doing pink um 961 for the blue house and 893 for the brown house I'm using 893 I think I'm gonna use three strands Threaded, give me a second. All right. Okay. So I'm going to do kind of a wide, another one of these like wide uh, detached chain stitches. So I'm gonna go up and down there. And then I'm gonna come up inside that loop. Oh, darn it, I pulled the, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So I wanna keep that very U-shaped. So I'm gonna keep that pretty loose and then I'm gonna come down on the stem. Oh my gosh. I've got all kinds of knots. And 
and then I'm gonna come in and just do some straight stitches down into that. I'm gonna do one there at the top. And then I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do one down to the stem and kind of cover up that stitch a little bit. Now these are all pretty loose to keep it kind of looped. If you very gently go in with your needle on these ones that you stitched first, you can kind of fluff them up a little bit. Can't stay long to watch, but hey, <laughs> loving the stitch along. It's so fun. All right, so let's do that again. So we're gonna do a wider U shape. Now, if you pull this thread too tight when you're like tacking it down, you'll get more of a V shape, which is fine. Like the tighter you pull it, the more of a V shape you'll create. So if you wanna keep it a little bit looser, you'll get more of a U. We're gonna go down. And you can see, like, it's pretty loose. Like you can see behind it. I'm gonna do this one over the top so it's a little bit different than the one next to it. Hmm, that wasn't my best idea. Shoot, I don't like that. I haven't even pulled it tight yet and it's like overlapping the side. Nope. Not today. This one needs to go down here so that it doesn't overlap the side. This one can go over the top again. Oh no, I don't like that either. Okay, hold on, put these down in the wrong spots. Man, I have threaded way too many needles during this session. Ah. I think I need to come on this side of it. That's better. All right, one more. This one's gonna kind of overlap the one next to it. We're not gonna worry about that. I think that this one was, the U was not very centered over the stem, which is why I was having some struggles with it. So if you're not very centered, keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be centered, but you might run into some issues. So I'm gonna do it taller over here. Go down there. This one might need five stitches instead of four. Do this one over the top and then we'll take a look at it. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more. Okay, there we go. Let's zoom out a little bit. Look at our cute little plants. I'm very pleased. Okay. This one might need another stitch right here. I'm just gonna go kind of in between those. I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. And then I'll just like puff that up around it. Okay, there we go, friends. 
our cute little flower area is filling up. All right, that was a lot, but it only took us 35 minutes, so I think we did pretty good. All right, let me know if you have questions once you get working on this. We will move to the other side tomorrow, and then we'll do our books on Friday. Okay, oh, and our cat. Oh my goodness, this went way faster than I meant, didn't mean for it to go. <laughs> okay, have a good afternoon, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Goodbye.